to Rimsha. Now it is Kelb. Feliber up top. Takes a shot. Score! Darian Kelb! Welcome to another edition of Clan Chat. And it is my pleasure to be joined all the way from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, the home of the Thai Cats, the home of my brother in law's favorite place, Tim Hortons Field, the uh, hallowed ground of the Canadian Football League, Darian Kelb. And let's just talk about it. I mean, it, it's quite neat. We were talking a little bit off camera, Darian, about the Euros. And I'm sure you're watching the Stanley Cup in the good time zone there. Like, it's a really good good time for sports right now it's a really good time to talk about you joining the glasgow uh clan oh yeah yeah for sure i'm really excited about it um yeah the, all you can pretty much do right now is watch uh watch sports i mean it's uh we're having the hottest weather of uh of the summer so far uh it's very humid out here uh just trying to stay in and stay air conditioned so yeah we'll throw in the soccer games on and uh yeah i got the stanley cup going you were telling me off camera you're an avid golfer as well, and Coach Nielsen told you, yeah, just bring along the club. So you must be excited about Scotland and some of the, the world-class uh, golf uh, facilities. Yeah, yeah, I am. Uh, I do like to get out there and golf pretty often. I wouldn't say uh, uh, the, my my game's anything to talk about. But, uh, but yeah, no, uh, I'm really excited to get out there. And uh, I've heard Scotland, some of the most beautiful courses in uh, in the world, so um yeah it's going to be a treat to uh get to play on some so you mentioned Corey there reaching out and saying well if, if you come uh, if you sign uh, bring the golf clubs was that an easy conversation with coach nielsen we've done a couple of these clan chats now with some of your teammates the new signings and, and some of the returnees as well and certainly a lot of guys excited to play for Corey, but excited to get going and, and do better than we did last year so was it an easy conversation with Corey? yeah i mean uh Pretty much one of the first things Corey uh, asked me was uh, just to tell him about myself, you know, before we even got into the hockey. And, uh, you know, I really liked that, you know, someone who wanted to get to know me first as a person before he even wanted to uh, talk about hockey. So um, Corey was really easy to talk to and I was really sold on everything he had to say. You know, I wasn't really familiar with uh, EIHL or with uh, with Glasgow, um, but he had nothing but great things to say about the city the fans, uh, the organization. So, uh, yeah, you know, uh, Corey really made it an easy conversation. Well, I'm glad that you don't mind uh, talking about yourself uh, because I'm going to ask you some questions as well. You're in Hamilton. We joke about the CFL, but what do you do uh, in the off season when you, when you leave Duke La Trenche and you go back to Canada? Like what, to, other than golf, what do you enjoy? Uh, well, uh, you know, just, uh, enjoy, uh, hanging out with my friends, my family, you know, for most of the year I'm away for, uh, for most of the year. So I like to see my family and, uh, I do some, uh, part-time work for, uh, my dad has a kitchen cabinet company. So I'll do some work here on the side. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a, pretty much about it. You know, I get, I work out, play some four on four, uh, summer hockey league and, uh, yeah, I'm on the ice twice a week. Uh, yeah, that's about it. So your dad, he's got his own company there. He puts you, puts you to work uh, during the off season. Is your dad a big hockey guy? Was he a big influence on your career? Yeah, you know, uh, he's a Bruins fan. Uh, both my parents are big influences on my careers, and uh, you know, uh, you know, it's cool they get to watch me, uh, watch me along the way. Well, I'm a big Bruins guy, so if your dad makes it over to see you play at Brayhead Arena, I'll buy him a beer because uh, I grew up in Newfoundland. And actually, you know the East Coast well because you had some good seasons at Dalhousie University, so you must have fond memories of the East Coast of Canada as well. Oh, I have nothing nothing but good things to say about the East Coast of uh, Canada. Um, sometimes I wish I was from out there. I love it so much. You know, the people are really relaxed and such nice, genuine people out there. And uh some of my best uh, best buddies that I've made uh, through hockey and just through school are from out there. Uh, I love the East Coast. And did you enjoy playing at Dalhousie? Because that's a great school. Yeah, Dal was awesome. You know, from uh, just all the teams, whether it's from the boys' teams to the girls' teams, everyone was just always supporting each other. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the campus is unreal. And just being like right in downtown uh, Halifax there, you know, it's it's awesome. You've actually been uh, quite lucky in your career to play in some beautiful spots in Canada because both Quebec and Gatineau in your QMJHL days, you talk about Dalhousie, I mean, Laval as well. Like you, you've really touched some great Canadian cities and now you're, you're coming to a great Scottish city, city. But let's talk a little bit about that progression from the QMJHL all the way through and talk about your time in places like Quebec and Gatineau. Yeah, I mean, uh, 
growing up in Canada, you know, I was used to, well, just in Ontario, I was used to the cold weather, but going to Quebec in those uh, winter months when it would get to like minus 40 degrees, uh, I wasn't used to that. I wasn't the biggest fan of that, but the city alone, Quebec City, it's a beautiful city, lots of culture there. And the fans there are so passionate about hockey, you know, uh, especially without having an NHL team there, you know, they really support the, uh, the Quebec ramparts. Uh, even Gatineau, it was, uh, it was super nice. Some of my best memories of junior from playing Gatineau. Um, yeah, I, uh, how I found myself in QMJHL, I wasn't drafted to the OHL uh, at 16. So I went and played some junior B in Fort Erie. And then I got invited to uh, the Quebec Ramparts camp as a walk-on. And uh, yeah, I made the team from there. I had a good camp. And yeah, from, uh, from there, that's how my junior career started. And uh, yeah, then went to school at Dalhousie. And yeah. San Jose, of course, they played one of the games at the practice ring. They led by two in that one and ended up trailing and falling. Left side, Kelb, he shoots and scores! Darian Kelb is first in the AHL. He blisters that one past the glove hand to stay you about your junior career there and, and sort of the progression, but major junior, especially the Q, I mean, you've got to be a good skater. And one of the things Corey is really excited about is you're a big guy at six foot three, but you're mobile and your skating is one of your huge assets. So anyone who's not seen sort of the, the clips of you in the East Coast Hockey League or in Slovakia, just talk about what you're bringing to the table and a little bit about your game and what, uh, what they can expect when you uh, wear a purple jersey uh yeah i mean like like you said uh i think skating is one of my uh, strong assets to my game you know i can get back uh, retrieve pucks pretty quickly and uh i think uh my first pass helping the team break out that's what i'm going to bring to the team you know i i feel myself i'm really calm with the puck i don't you know i don't hesitate with it i don't uh i'm not too panicked out there i know where the play can uh, be made um yeah i like to i like to jump up in the rush i like to pr produce some offense for the team help out as much as i can uh so yeah i'm gonna uh, i want to be a player that's relied upon by the coaches and my teammates to play say in the last minute of the game whether you're up by one or down by one you know that's the type of player i want to be and that's what i want to bring to uh, the glasgow clan next year you've got a great shot as well i i've seen some clips we watched a lot of video on you of course and that's part of the process when you're bringing in new guys but some of those one tees from from the point are a thing of beauty is that something you work on in the summer as well when you're playing four on four and all that uh, not so much in the four on four. Cause you know, the one T's are kind of frowned upon when we're out there, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. when I'm out there and just my regular skates, yeah, you know, I like to, I like to use my shot. I think it's one of my abilities that whether it goes in or not, it creates a uh, traffic or creates havoc in front of the net, creates some rebounds for guys. I think I, I'm able to get the puck through. And that is something that I work on in the summer, uh, from the blue line there, working it from the top and being able to get the puck through to the net. I love the fact that you said that you want to be on the ice in the last minute, whether we're up by a goal or down by a goal. And, and the point is there, I mean, it's two way play, isn't it? You can contribute offensively, but you also take a lot of pride in your defensive game. And I know that's something that Corey, when he was looking at video and stuff, he said, this, this guy can play on both ends of, in both ends of the rink and really brings a lot on the defensive side of the game too. Yeah. I mean, you know, just as much as, you know, you like scoring goals. I, I hate being out there when we get scored upon just, just as much as I, I hate losing more than I love winning. You know, I, I don't want to be out there when I want to be out there helping the team. You know, I don't want to feel like I'm letting the team down when I'm out there and, you know, yeah, I want to bring uh, some solid defensive play and just be, just be sound defensively for the team next year. A lot of your experience, as we mentioned, Dalhousie, Quebec, uh, Laval, all those sort of stops. But you spent some time in Europe last year, Duke Latrentian. And uh, how was that? That was your first foray into Europe. Yeah, that was uh, it was an awesome experience. It was uh, it was very different for sure, especially. I mean, I dealt with a language barrier in uh, Quebec, but majority of people could speak uh, speak English. Or you can get your point across where. In Slovakia, I'd go to the grocery store and some stuff like that. You know, it was a little difficult, but it was cool. It was a really cool culture shock. You know, I'd be carrying around my Google Translate everywhere. But, uh, you know, it was super, it was super cool. Um, yeah, I, I loved it. It was a great first experience.
And certainly, I think Trench, I think uh, Zdeno Char is from Trench, and I know that he he attends games in that league once in a yep. while when he's not in Boston, where he lives full time now, even though he's retired. Did you ever run into any ex NHL guys, or is there anything interesting like that? Um, actually, I didn't run into Chara. Uh, Gabrick and Marion Hosa are from there too. Actually, yep. one of the practice rinks we practice at was Gabrick's rink there. Uh, just walked by Marion Gabrick once. That was about it. But uh, no, didn't see any other uh, famous, famous, famous faces that I recognized. Yeah, Slovakian hockey goes. Trenchin was a real hotbed for those couple of years with like grade A NHL talent. So yeah. I'm sure you enjoyed playing in Slovakia because I mean they had a bronze medal at the Olympics there in Beijing. So it really is a boom time for Slovakian hockey as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean Slovakia, like I said, I was told there that hockey is bigger than soccer. You know, uh, they uh, they really they were really passionate fans, really passionate fans. I have to say and. Uh, Everywhere we went, you know, it's they're chanting. Uh, it was a great time playing for Trenson. Well, you talked about the language barrier in Quebec. So you're like me. You're, you're from Canada, but you only speak a little bit of French. Is that correct? Enough to get by. Enough to yeah, get by. Yeah, and probably not enough, but and certainly no Slovakian. But you'll have a, maybe a, a, an accent barrier when you get to Scotland, and our, <laughs> our producer, Craig Anderson, will have to help you with some of the, the good phrases and some of the jargon when you come to Scotland. So that, that'll be fun, too. You, you said your dad's a Bruins fan. Are, are you a Leafs fan? Because uh, if people don't know their geography, Hamilton's just outside, like a couple uh, drives away, short drive away from, from Toronto. And, and certainly, I'm sure you grew up watching the Leafs. Yeah, I'm a Leafs fan. My uh, when I was younger, my mom made me a Leafs fan. Couldn't have two Bruins fans in the house, apparently. So, but uh, I've been a Leafs fan ever since I can remember. So, yeah, I get uh, I get uh, heartbroken every year watching them in the playoffs. It is wild because when you look at hockey globally and you look at the EIHL, it's, it's not all about money because the Leafs can spend as much as they want. And, and they've got a real quagmire with four guys making over $40 million there and the whole Marner situation. But sometimes it just doesn't click. And when you look at the Leafs in paper, you, you wonder how they haven't won a Stanley Cup. And as a diehard fan, that must drive you bananas. Yeah, I mean, there's, uh, <laughs> there's some uh, things I think they can do with the roster, but I mean, who am I to really? Uh, who am I to really tell them what to do? I mean, I'm just as just as good as any fan online telling them what to do, right? They know what's best inside that organization, but uh, yeah, you know, just hopefully next year's our year. Those no movement clauses they gave those four guys have certainly put them behind the eight ball as well. And when you see, I mean, Jacob Markstrom just got traded to New Jersey. I mean, there's a guy that the Leafs would have been crying out for, but it's just it's hard to land those guys. Uh, when you look at the, the NHL as a whole, I mean, obviously, did you grow up wanting to play for the Leafs or, or was it sort of an ambition to play hockey uh, in, at Q level or major junior level and see what happened? Uh I think no. Since I was a younger kid, I think, you know, growing up in Southern Ontario, it was always about hockey. I mean, playing road hockey out in the driveway just by myself, you know, scoring those goals on the empty net, pretending you're uh, scoring the Game 7 Stanley Cup winner. You know, I always wanted to uh, be playing for the Toronto Maple Leafs and be playing for a Stanley Cup. But as you got older, you uh, you realize, you know, that playing pro hockey, it's that was really the main goal, making a life out of hockey. And um, that's what I'm doing right now. And, you know, I'm, I'm really happy with my decision and what I'm doing right now. Up top. Oh, broken stick. Oh. That was Kelb who broke his stick and they come across the line. Hawkins sends it back and look at Kelb getting right back in on the action. Are you enjoying, cause I've asked some of your new teammates cause it's, it's tough over here and you'll find that and you, you would have found it in Slovakia. The NHL games are on at midnight. 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Are you enjoying watching the Stanley Cup in, in a time zone there that makes it a little bit more uh, easy to access games? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. When I went over to Slovakia, all I was seeing were uh, we'd have the highlights going in the morning in the dressing room and be posted on YouTube and it would say, like, posted three hours ago and we're just waking up watching them. But, yeah, no, I didn't watch many sports. I like, didn't get to see the Super Bowl at all. Uh, but actually – Here's it's a it's a good time. You know, the late game here is only at 10 o'clock, whereas when I was playing in Bakersfield, California uh, on Sundays, say for NFL football, you're waking up and it was football at 10 in the morning, one o'clock and uh, four o'clock. And then same with the hockey was you'd wake up the seven o'clock game here. Well, in Bakersfield, it'd be at four o'clock there and then it'd be at seven o'clock. Right. So, 
yeah, I mean, uh, it's going to be tough. You know, you don't get to watch the North American sports over during the uh, season, but it's all good. Well, the great thing about NFL, if you're an NFL guy, is that you can still get them at a decent time because the one o'clock kickoffs will be six o'clock in Scotland. So if you're off yeah. on a Sunday, you can still the NFL has got it right when it comes to making sure the European uh, fan base is serviced yeah. and uh, you'll enjoy the NFL. The Super Bowl still is, is a late night, but that's that's a one off. Um, other other than uh, watching uh, the sports, is there anything you're, you're looking forward to in Scotland? Are you a music guy? Do you like to do like sort of touring around and seeing history? Yeah, I mean, I part of the reason why I wanted to go play in Europe was just to see different parts of the world. You know, uh, so when I was in Slovakia, me and my girlfriend, we got to travel to Vienna, Austria. That was super nice. Uh, at the end of the year, I got to go to Poland. Um, so, yeah, I've been looking at uh, Edinburgh, I believe it's pronounced. That seems like a really nice place. I keep getting all these uh, my social media places to visit and restaurants to visit in Scotland. So I've been saving them all and sending them to my girlfriend. So uh, she's, she's kind of the, the planner for that. <laughs> well, we'll take care of you. We'll point you in the right direction of good music venues and, and, and certainly good restaurants. And you know what? It, it is a great city. Glasgow, in my opinion, is one of the top cities on, on the 10 team circuit in the elite league. There's a lot going on in Glasgow. It's, it's a, it's a city full of culture and, and certainly the purple army. Did, have you heard much about the fan base? Because they're a passionate, passionate bunch crying out for a big year. And certainly that's what we're hoping to build to. I was doing a little bit of reading up when uh, I was seeing all the signings coming in and then just hearing about uh, what Corey had to say about the fan base and just reading about uh, the players that signed before me that were on the team uh, here before. Uh, but other than that, no, I, I don't know too much. On a Saturday night when things are going our way, you'll really enjoy it because it is really a fun place to play. It's a great arena as well, uh, the Brayhead Arena. Are you, uh, you and your girlfriend, are you super excited? Is it still sort of pinch me because, like you said, you didn't know a lot about the Elite League, but here you are, you're on clan chat, and in a few months' time, your life for, for at least that season is going to be in a place that you probably hadn't thought about playing for playing in before. No, I'm, I'm super excited. As soon as... Uh... As soon as I got the call from from Corey, I uh, I was super excited, you know, that he was interested in me. Um, yeah, we are looking forward to it. It's uh, I, I I yeah, I don't even know what to say. I'm just super excited to uh, to get to Glasgow. Do you have some European roots? Because one of your defense uh, defensive teammates, uh, Chris McKay, was on recently. He's got some Scottish roots, so he played in Dundee last year. He wanted to stay in Scotland. Uh, Kelb, is there any? Uh, have your grandparents told you any stories, or is there some lineage there? Uh, so th the Kelb last name is Polish. That comes from my dad's side, and then on my mom's side, uh, I'm Belgium. I'm, and then my one grandma is from England and my other grandma, she says she's uh, Irish, Ukrainian. She says like a bunch of stuff in her blood. So the main takeaways are I think it's England, Belgium and Polish. But uh, I don't know too much about the, the ancestry now. Well, so you're going to touch on it all and just enjoy it and, and add Scottish to, yeah. to, to the to the lineage. When you come over here and you look at the fan base and you look at the opportunity, uh, is there any of the signings of, of, of your teammates for the upcoming season that you're really looking forward to playing with? Uh, yeah, I mean, of course, I think the Simone Dupre signing obviously catches your eye, right? As a uh, defenseman who's played a, uh, I think it's what, closer, over 200 games in the in the NHL for the Pittsburgh Penguins. You know, he definitely has uh, a lot of experience and definitely hopefully a lot of knowledge to share. So, I mean, that definitely excites you when you see someone like that sign your team, I believe um the one goaltender bow he uh he's got some nhl experience too i mean yeah i think just looking at all the signings and i think there's a lot of potential for this team and i'm happy that uh, i get to be a part of it and i know that everyone going in there is going to be working hard to put the team in a position to be in the playoffs and compete for a championship You've got a lot of American Hockey League experience as well, and that's important. You talk about some of the guys with NHL experience. The AHL is a really good level of hockey, obviously, and certainly experience that you can bring wherever you play. Talk about your time in the AHL and what you learned playing in, in that league. Yeah, well, I mean, first thing I, I learned right away was uh, my first call-up was, 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 was a morning skate, actually, not even just a regular practice, just a 15-minute morning skate. And the uh, the intensity of the practice, the execution of passes on the sticks, um, you know, there was no 
there was no screw ups in that morning skate. And that just really opened my eyes to if you want to play at this level or get to the next level that you need to, you know, take it seriously. Like this is your job. And just every day you're going in there trying to get better and pushing each other, pushing your teammates, pushing yourself to get better. Um, you know, I learned a lot of things from, you know, guys that played in the NHL and then were down there in the AHL now. And, you know, guys that went up and down just from even coaches that, you know, if you show up and do the work, you know, good things are going to happen. You can't just think anything's going to be given to you. Um, you got to treat your body right off the ice and you got to make sure just as much effort as you're putting in on the ice, you got to be doing that off the ice, taking care of your body and getting the proper nutrition and sleep. I'm glad you said that because I was going to ask you, we know you're doing the four on four skates and we know you're doing your regular skate. Uh, what does the summer look like training wise for you? Is there anything interesting you do with your diet or is there anything in the gym specifically you do as a defenseman? Uh, no, there's nothing special. I mean, I work out five times a week. Uh, I skate, including the four on four, two to three times a week. There's nothing, nothing really too special for it. I'm just on my own for training. Uh, I like to do my own thing now, you know, I get a program made and, you know, that's about it. That's great though. So you're, you're in shape, you're ready to go. You're, you're building towards a big season, your first season in the elite league and uh, the purple army will be pretty excited. I think talk about the number 74. I always love to ask guys why they pick a certain number. Uh, so yeah, that actually wasn't my first option. Uh, you know, I've ever since a kid, I was 44 and then, uh, I've always had 44 in there. So I didn't get to pick 44. I tr tried to get four, wasn't there. And then uh, 77 was taken also. So that actually happened to me my last year in junior and where all those numbers were taken and I landed on 74. So I wanted to keep the four in there and, you know, I just thought the seven looked nice. So yeah, that, there's nothing really special about the number. Well, it's a cool story regardless because there's always something behind a number, even if it is, well, I couldn't get it in junior and I landed on that. So it's come full circle for you. Uh, I know you're busy. I know you've got lots on the go. Uh, I know you're excited to watch some more Euro football uh, with your Italian friends there in <laughs> Hamilton. Before we let you go, do you have a message for the Purple Army? Because the next time they see you, it'll be in person. Yeah, I mean, I'm just super excited to get there and uh... – get to meet everyone and uh, show everyone uh, what I'm bringing to uh, Glasgow. And uh, yeah, I just uh, hope to get there soon. Darian Kelb, number 74 in purple. His first season in the EIHL and we're looking forward to it. Thanks for taking the time to join us on Clan Chat and looking forward to meet you in person. Awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs>